So we have two uh, techniques of integration, right? So we have integration by substitution, and then we have um, integration by parts, yes. Um, and so um, we're going, we have two more to learn. Um, we have trigonometric substitution and integration by parts. So one of the big things is that, you know, it, it's as you learn more, it gets harder because you have to decide you know, you have to integrate, and so you have to pick between all of the techniques you know, and it's not obvious which one to use, so you, you know, you got to sort of keep everything short. So, I guess that's normal. The, the more you know, the more you have to learn, I guess. Um, anyway, so we're going to start applying some of the, um, the rules that we know to different trig integrals. So, so far, um, we know, all right, so we know, oh, whoops. Um, let's write them down right here. Okay, so we know that what the integral of tangent x, x is, right? Do you guys remember what that is? Or do you guys remember how we found it? You don't have to remember, right? But do you remember how to find it? Yes. How did you find it? Turn it into sine and cosine. Turn it into sine and cosine and use, use substitution, right? So if you do that, you get negative natural log absolute value of? Oh, so close. Cosine. Okay, um, now, and then you, so we know the integral of all the other ones, right? But then, um, so, okay, but then what we want to do, though, is um, we want to, so, um, we want to figure out a uh, reduction formula for um, integrals like, um, the integral of, so we'll start off with tangent because that's the easiest one. So basically, we know how to integrate tangent, for example, um, but can we integrate tangent squared or tangent cubed or tangent to the fourth, tangent to the fifth? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to derive a formula so that we can um, reduce the degree of the tangent, make it lower, and then um, we can integrate that way. So like if you have tangent to the tenth, you would be able to find what that is. Okay, so. Um, before we do that, though, we have some important, so these are important identities you should know. So hopefully you already know them. If not, oh, okay. All right, sine squared plus cosine squared, what is it? One. Is equal to one. And then um, that one's really important to know, the Pythagorean identity. And then there are two more, right? Do you guys remember how you get those? The other two? Divide the sine. Yeah, either, so you don't need to memorize all of them. You just make sure you know this one. And then the other two, you get them by dividing by sine squared, both sides by sine squared, or both sides by cosine squared. So like, for example, if I divide everything by sine squared, this would turn into one, one plus cotangent, cotangent, cotangent squared equals to cosecant squared, right? So that's the other idea. And then if you divide by cosine squared, you would get tangent squared plus one equals to secant squared. Okay. So again, you don't have to memorize all of them. You just memorize that one, this one, this one that we wrote down, and then remember to get the other two, divide by sine squared and cosine squared. Okay. Now, um, two identities that we're going to use a lot are the reduction Identity. So you can, um, so I guess before I write it down, if I asked you to, to integrate, for example, sine squared, would you be able to? Yes. No answer means no, because you don't know. So you know how to integrate just sine, right? But sine squared, well, that's a problem, right? Because you don't know how to integrate that. You need to get rid of the squared somehow. Um, so. What you can do, though, is use the reduction identity. Uh, sine squared equals to 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. And that you can integrate, right, if you had to. And then you have cosine squared theta is 1 half, and then 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. OK. So for now, let's just stick with those three. These are important identities. 
Okay, now, so, um, so what we want to do, so here's the idea for the, the reduction formula that we're going to derive. Um, the idea is that, um, so here's the idea. I want to have um, this equal to some stuff, which I don't know what it is yet, but some stuff, and then plus the integral of tangent to a power that's less than n. So this is, I'll write n minus 2, and you don't know why yet, but I'll just write it down. But So this is the idea, that, that you can uh, come up with a formula that works for any power of tangent, no matter what power tangent has. You can then uh, turn it into an integral with a lower degree. So like, for example, if I had a power of 10, then I apply this formula that we don't know where it is and we haven't derived. But you apply this formula, and it would turn it into integral of tangent to the 8. And then, if you use it again on tangent to the 8, it would turn it into tangent to the 6. And then tangent to the 4th. And then tangent squared. And then, and then nothing. And then you would end up with nothing, right? All right, so that's the idea. Not that we're going to do tangent to the 10th, but you could if you wanted to, right? OK, now, so that's our idea. Um, so now we need to find it. Now, um, so before we, before we actually do it, why don't we uh, talk about what we're going to do here. Um, so I have a question. If um, the question is, and we're trying to figure out what that is, um, what would make, ooh, what would make this integral easy? So like if I asked you, if I told you, okay, you can put in, not take away, you can put in any function you want into that integral. Whatever you want to make it easier, what function would you pick? Well, no, that, because that's what tangent equals to, right? But that wouldn't really help you because, so here, let's, let me just write it down right here. So you don't have to write this down, but hold on. Give me, give me one moment. All right, so if I write it down as sine to, to the n power over cosine to the n power, does that help me find the integral. No, right? Because you can't do the same thing that we did with just tangent. Because So just imagine, you let u be cosine, right? And then du would be equal to sine. But then what do you do with sine to the n? You have all these signs that you don't know what to do with, right? But you can put in there any function you want. Wait, why can't you just do tan x and then put the n on the outside? Because it isn't, the n is the exponent of tangent. It's not n times tangent. But you can't put the exponent on the outside? Mm -mm. No, you can only take it outside if it's a um, constant. So like if it was, oh, I guess I can just do it right here. So like if you have this, like that. So then this constant can come outside. But if it's a constant, no, no, multiple. No, no, no. I mean like have tan x in parentheses. And then put the oh, yeah, you can do that. But that's just a different way of writing it, right? So you can write it. At, so we can write it like this, like, like that. But it's still the same thing, right? We still don't know how to do that, right? Unless the n was a number and then you could use u substitute. But no, it still wouldn't work. Ooh, would but you're onto something. OK, so here, check this out. All right. So because you, you are onto something. And it's related to the question. All right, so I'm just going to make up a number here. I'm just going to say this is 4. OK, can you do u substitution then? Yes. No. no. But what function could you add in there so that you would be able to use u substitution? Which one? Oh, no. Did you say it, Joe? So you get squared. Yes, a secant squared, right? Secant squared. Yeah, look, OK. If, if I, oh my gosh. If I had a secant squared here, why would I want a secant squared? Wouldn't that make it more complicated? No, right? Why is secant squared so helpful for you to be able to find the integral? Yeah, that's the derivative of tangent, right? So 
So if I had a secant squared in there, then this would be easy, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, all right. So that's the answer to the question I was just asking you guys. Great job. Plus, plus one. Bonus. Okay. So secant squared would make it easy. Okay. Now, then the question is, well, how do I get a secant squared in there? Well, you can use a identity. Yes. Okay. Off we go then to infinity and beyond. Okay, so we have our identity, which we haven't actually wrote down, but remember I told you guys when we were over here on the left side, I said that we can derive it. So if I asked you what's the identity that, um, that involves tangent and secant, you would say, well, all you got to do is grab this one, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1 and divide it by cosine squared and you get, if I divide this by cosine squared, what would I get? Tangent squared plus, and divide by cosine squared, I get 1 equals to secant squared. So that's my connection from tangent to secant. Okay, so here's what you do. Check this out. It's very ingenious. So what you do is you rewrite this as tangent, um, tangent to the n minus 2x times tangent squared x. Don't, do you guys agree that that's the same as what I had? Because if I multiply these two together, don't I get tangent raised to the n? Right? Because you add the exponents. So n minus 2 plus 2, that's just n. Right? So these two are the same, right? But then what can I do with tangent squared? Change that to secant squared minus Secant squared minus 1, right? OK, so I'm, I am rolling here. Here we go. Okay. This is better than a T Pain concert. <laughs> that some people are going to. Secant so squared minus one. What is it? What? Oh. Wait, is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right, just making sure. All right, and then what do I do? Mm -mm. Not quite, because I've got this negative 1 here messing around. So what should I do there? Yeah, distribute, right? So OK, if I distribute this uh, in here, notice that what I'll get is the integral of tangent to the n minus 2x secant squared x, and then minus the integral of tangent to the n minus 2x dx. And notice that what I have is, so this second integral, tangent to the n minus 2, um, I don't know how to evaluate that, right? But that's OK, because remember, my goal was to get stuff and then plus the integral of tangent to the n minus 2. So this one is my reduction of degree. That's why it's called a reduction formula, because you go from one power to one that's lower. So this, this second integral, I'm not going to worry about. I'm just going to leave it alone. And I'm going to focus on this first integral. Um, is that one relatively simple to find what that is? <coughs> it is, right? Because what do I use on that, on that integral? We were just talking about it. U substitution, right? We would let u be, so let's, let's write this out. So we're going to let u equal to tangent, right? Tangent x. Then du is going to equal to secant squared x dx. And actually, I left the dx out of here. So now if you go back and you look at our integral, this is <coughs> u, right? It's going to be u to the n minus 2. And then the other part right here, this secant squared x dx, that is my du, right? Does that make sense? You guys with me? Kind of, sort of? So we let u equal to tangent. So this is going to be u raised to the n. Oh. Interesting pop up there. Hello. OK. Sorry about that. Um, 
that's going to be u to the n minus 2, and then the secant squared x dx turns into d. Okay? Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's do it. So this is equal to the integral of u to the n minus 2 du. And then I'm just going to rewrite this integral over here. The integral of tangent n minus 2 x dx. And then um, let's find the antiderivative of that. What is it? U, U to the n minus, one. n minus 1 divided by n minus, n minus 1. And what was u again? Tangent x. And then minus the integral of tangent to the n minus 2 x dx. And that is my reduction formula for tangent. So the integral of tangent to the nx is equal to that right there that I just derived. Does that make sense? Yeah? So the good thing about having this is that, you know, so now that I know that, um, Let's, let me go down a little bit. So let's say, for example, OK. Oh, hello. OK, so let's say, for example, um, I want to find the integral. We won't do tangent to the 10th, but how about tangent to the 6th x? So I say, OK, well, I just derived this formula here. Um, for tangent raised to any power. So this works for any power, right? So if I apply this formula up here, what would, what would happen? Um, first off, what is n equal to in my example that I just made up? Six. Six, okay. So what would it equal to then using the reduction formula? Tangent to the n minus one, so fifth, right? Over five minus the integral of tangent to the n minus 2, which would be tangent to the fourth. OK. And if I wanted to continue, then what would I do? Do it again on just this part, right? So notice this one would stay the same, but we would apply the formula to tangent to the fourth. And so I would go, OK, so this is equal to. So I'm just going to bring this one down. And then, so then I'll apply the formula to just this one. So this is going to be minus, what does the formula tell me? This is going to be tangent to the third. Three. tangent to the third over 3. And then just be careful with your signs, right? Because what's, the, what's this sign going to be? It's going to end up being plus. Why is it plus? Well, from the formula, it's minus. But then it's minus the entire integral. So that negative distributes and makes it into a positive. And what's the, um, what's the exponent inside? Two. Two. And last but certainly not least, one more time, right? One more time. Just rewrite the first part. Tangent to the fifth over five minus tangent to the third <coughs> over three. And then if I apply the reduction formula here, what would it look like? Tangent to the one, right, over one, right, because it's n minus one. And then minus, it would be the integral of Tangent to the 0, what's tangent to the 0? 1, right? So the integral of 1 dx, which maybe we should just erase that and write it as, what's the integral of 1 dx? It's just equal to x, right? OK, now, so that's, you know, it's, that's pretty complicated if you think about it. We had to apply the reduction formula one, two, three times before you, we were able to find it. But think about the alternative. The alternative 
So let's say you know you you don't have this formula, and you're presented with this integral that you need to evaluate. What would be your option? What would you do? Mm -hmm. Where you would have to do basically what we did with the reduction formula, but with the numbers, right? So like you would have done, you would have gone and said, okay, well, let me break off, um, break it into tangent to the fourth and tangent squared. And then you would have used the identity. And then you would have distributed. And then you would have used u sub two. Exactly what we did right here, but with the six, right? So with six, the sixes, and then numbers, and all this, all of these would be numbers. And then you would end up with the integral of tangent to the fourth, right? OK, but at that point, what would you have to do? You would have to do exactly the same thing all over again. You would have to break off tangent squared times tangent squared. And then you would have to do it secant squared minus one. Distribute the whole thing. Do it all over again. And you would end up with a tangent squared. And then what would you do? One more time, right? So that's the good thing about having a uh, reduction formula is that it works for any power. And then once you have the formula, you know, we derived it. So then um, you can then just apply it as many times as you need and then you're good to go. Yes, sir? If it was an odd number, would you go to negative one? Um, the only difference if it's odd is that in the end, what would your last, so here our last integral was the integral of just one. What would the last integral be? L epsilon x. Well, it would have been just the integral of tangent would, would have been left over, right? Oh, yeah. But we know what that is. That's negative ln of cosine. So if you give us, like, like on a test, would you want to see? Like, if you gave us, like, tangent to the I don't want you guys to memorize the formula um, because that's silly. The important thing is to understand how to derive it. So I'll probably ask you guys to derive one. So that's really the fun part. Applying formulas, that's no fun. No, it's not. You just grab it from the little table. Plug it in. But, um, yeah, driving it. Um, did you have a question, sir? No. Oh. Um, okay, so, questions? No? You guys are doing pretty good? Um, Okay, do you guys want to uh, step it up a notch? Would you guys like to derive the reduction formula for reduction formula for sine? Yes? Okay. Silence means yes. All right, so this one's a little bit more involved, which means a little bit more. Thank you. Fun. Yeah. You guys maybe don't agree. A little bit more involved is a little bit more fun. More time to share with friends in math. So you guys are going to have a lot of time this weekend to hang out with, you know, a cup of tea and math and. Just do problems. Anyways, okay, so what do you guys think? I want to derive a formula, so I want this to equal to stuff plus the integral of sine to the n minus 2x dx. So this is my goal. That's what I want. So what should I do? Can I do this? You guys have a lot of ideas, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys give me an idea and then we'll roll with it. I got an idea. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Okay. Go ahead, Daryl. Use the identity. Okay. So before I use an identity, though, I have to do something, which is take the derivative sign. Take the what sign? What? Well, I can't use the identity as how it is in this its current oh, form. Just sign, like a sine n minus two. Oh, okay. So break it up. Okay, so write it as sine to the n minus 2 <coughs> x and then times sine squared x. Okay, that sounds like an excellent idea. And then this is equal to sine to the n minus 2 x. And then what is sine squared equal to? Sine squared x? Oh, yes. The second blue step? 
This one? Yes. That was really the first step. We just broke it up, so sine to the n. We broke it up into sine to the n minus 2 times sine squared. Because our goal is that we want to uh, we want to change this sine squared into use the identity, right? Pythagorean identity and turn it into what did it turn into? Sine squared equals to? One minus, one minus cosine squared, right? Sine squared is one minus cosine squared. Okay, now, um, hmm, let me see. I, I'm going to distribute, so notice so far it's pretty similar to the one that we did, just did with tangent, right? Um, I'm going to distribute, but I'm going to write down, write them down backwards. So I'm going to write down um, the negative integral of sine to the n minus 2 um, x cosine squared x, and then plus the integral of sine to the n minus 2 x. So why, why do I want to do that? Yeah, so this, notice, this is my integral that I'm going to have left over. So this is the one that I don't really, I'm not going to worry about. That's my, um, the integral in red up at the top, right? That's, that's this one right here. So I'm, I know I'm going to end up with a sine to the n minus 2x, and that's this one. What I really then need to figure out is how to figure out, how to find that first integral. Um, and what do you guys notice about that one? So is that easy or difficult? So I'm going to focus on this integral right here. All right, so what do you guys think about this integral? So forget about everything else. We're just focusing here. It is difficult. What makes this, okay, all right. So what makes this integral much more difficult than the tangent one? It's cosine squared, and you need cosine. Exactly. The other one, when we had tangent and secant squared, secant squared is the exact <coughs> derivative of tangent. So that makes it easy. But here, I have cosine squared. And so like, for example, if you were sort of going to use the same strategy as before, you would say, OK, well, I'm going to let u equal to sine, because then the derivative of that is cosine, and cosine is right there. But then what's the problem with that strategy? <coughs> There's an extra cosine, right? And what do you do with the extra cosine? Well, I don't know. You can't just like, take it out or anything, right? So problems. OK, so, so you go, um, substitution doesn't work. So what do you try? No, when substitution doesn't work. Yeah, by parts. Okay, all right. So we integrate by parts. So we integrate by parts. Now, our integration by parts is going to be a little funky. Um, any ideas? Give me some ideas. So I need to pick my u, and my, I need to pick a dv. Okay, so try dv is cosine squared x dx, and then u is sine to the n minus 2x. So this is kind of our most, our, our instinctual reaction, right? Because, um, you know, you, you have, this is easy to, to get the derivative of sine to the n minus 2, right? We can get the derivative of that, no problem. And then um, cosine squared, eh, you know, that's kind of left over, so maybe, <laughs> maybe I, can, I can do that. But, but okay, so think, all right, so thinking ahead, right, because it's important to think ahead to what your, because integration by parts, it's always a more than one step process, right? So you have to think forward and make sure that your next problem that you create is a problem that you can do. So, okay. So remember that the integral that you have left over after using integration by parts comes from getting the derivative of u 
and the antiderivative of dv, right? Because it's v du. Yes? OK, so then you think through. You go, OK, if I, if I get the derivative of this one and the antiderivative of that one, would I be able to find the integral? OK, so let's, let's think it through. So if you get the derivative of that, what would that be? You would have a, you'd have to use the chain rule, right? Bring the n minus 2 down. So n minus 2 times sine. And then you, by the chain rule, then have to multiply by cosine, right? So you'd have a sine raised to some power and then cosine. OK, so you keep those there. All right. You can already tell this isn't going to work. That's why I'm not writing it down. So sine to a power and then cosine. OK, then get the antiderivative of that one. How do you do that? Yes, you have to use the identity. We don't know how to find that, right? You have to use the identity that we wrote down earlier, this one over here. Way over here, the reduction identity. Oh, it's right there, this one. Right? So you would turn it into 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. You get the antiderivative of that, which is x plus sine of 2 theta, right? OK, so can you guys see where I'm going with this? Can you guys see the, the absolute disaster that is forming? So OK, so think this through. You're going to have an integral. It's going to have sine to a power, cosine to a power, all that times x plus sine of 2x. Oh, shoot me now. Just, just do it. Get me out of my misery. That's terrible. OK, so I don't really mean shoot me. Because some of you guys might actually want to do that. So. I did just give back an exam. OK, so then we go, OK, no. This is not the way to go. We erase. OK, so we go, hmm, well, let me see. So then we go, OK, let's, let's see if we can do something else. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a part of this. If I let dv equal to sine to the n minus 2x, would that work out? Can I integrate that? No, right? I don't know how to integrate that. OK, but what is missing? You guys mentioned it earlier. If I, what else, if I, what else, what piece of this can I put in here that makes that it easy to integrate? Daryl, you said it earlier. You did. You totally did. Just one cosine, right? So if I make dv sine to the n minus 2 times cosine, then I would only have one cosine left to let you. And so, OK, so let's kind of think this through a tiny bit, just a little bit. So this is something we can integrate, right? Sine to the n minus 2 x times cosine x. That we can integrate because we can use substitution, right? Just regular substitution. And then this, we can get the derivative of it. And so that looks a little bit more promising, right? Because there isn't as many things. So let's, let's try that. Let's see what happens. OK. All right. Good times. So let's put du here is equal to, actually, let me put it up here better, because I'm going to need that room. What is du equal to? Negative sine x. OK. Now, dv is this, right? So I'm just going to, we're just going to do this sort of in, in small print. So we already said that here we're going to do uh, a substitution to integrate this, right? We're going to let w equal to sine x. And then dw is going to equal to cosine x dx, right? So basically what we have is that the integral of, um, of let's write it out, sine to the n minus 2 cosine x dx is equal to the integral of w to the n minus 2. And then cosine x dx is dw, right? Do you guys agree? So it's like I'm doing a mini, a mini substitution inside of the integration by parts. Does that make sense? OK. So this, what is the integral of that? Um, 
w to the n minus 1, right? Over n minus 1. And what is w again? Sine x. So this is what v is. v is sine x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1. OK. And we're still crossing our fingers that this works, right? Because we don't know. But yeah, we're pretty sure because otherwise, why have I been doing this for a while? Especially on a Friday, you know? I mean, Friday, is this really appropriate for a Friday? I don't know. Rainy Friday, maybe. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Rainy Friday. <laughs> OK. So, um, <coughs> OK. So if I use integration by parts, this is equal to <coughs> uv minus the integral of v du, right? So u times v, which is cosine x sine. times sine to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 minus the integral of v du. So um, minus the integral of v du. Notice that I have this negative sign. So are you guys OK if I just change this to a plus? Is that OK? OK, if I multiply sine raised to the 1 times sine to the n minus 1, what would I get? N. Sine to the <coughs> n, right? And all that over n minus 1. Hmm, interesting. Interesting, interesting. It looks like we are not going anywhere. <laughs> Because so what I just found is this integral right here, right? And what I found is that is equal to this right here. Whew. OK, so it looks like I'm going around in a total circle, right? Eclipse. Eclipse? What? I don't know what you said. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, Daryl. I don't understand. But that's OK. All right, so let's, let's go back and take a look at what we've got. So. We have, OK, so let's, OK, all right. So here's the deal. This is what we've got, OK? OK, we have that the integral of sine to the nx dx is equal to purple box, purple box plus sine to the n minus 2x dx, yes? OK, all right. So let's, let's sort of remove all the clutter and just write that out. Because otherwise, everything is just a total mess. So sine to the n is equal to purple box plus sine to the n minus 2. <gasps> I ran out of board on my, oh no, I've reached the limit of my board. OK. All right, you guys remember, right? You guys have it on your piece of paper. Because I ran out of board space over here. I don't know if I'll be able to have. OK, so sine to the n is equal to purple box, which was, OK, already you're not helping me. OK. <laughs> OK, so purple box, oh, it's a negative purple box. So purple box is this, mustard purple box. OK, so negative all of this, yes? OK, I'm, I'm counting on you guys to, yes. to tell me, because I, don't, I can't see it. OK, negative purple box. Okay, why don't we just do this? Oh, you want me to tell you? Okay, forget it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you are not to be trusted. Thank you, Daryl. Okay, so purple, negative. I guess it's blue. I don't know. Okay, and then the negative I'll distribute into here, right? So this is going to be minus the integral of sine to the nx dx. <laughs> And then are you guys OK if I put the, the 1 over n minus 1 on the outside, like this? 1 over n minus 1. So this one right here. Instead of putting it on the inside, I'll just put it on the outside. OK. And then I'm, what else? And then I'm missing that, this integral, right? The integral of sine to the n minus 2. OK. So plus, plus, yeah. OK. Plus the integral of sine to the n minus 2 x d x. OK, so who sees the light at the end of the tunnel? What do you notice? It looks terrible, right? But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. What is it? There is a light. There is a light. 
Because so, okay, so this last one, we don't worry about, right? Sine to the n minus 2. That one's fine. What about this monster? That sine to the n. What do I do with that? Yes! You add it to the other side! Oh my god! This is so exciting. Okay, so you add 1 over n minus 1, the integral of sine to the nx dx. You add it to the left side and the right side. Whoa! That's nuts! Bam! Okay, and then when you combine these two, what do you get? This is so exciting. Okay, so this is 1, right? You have 1 integral and then plus 1 over n minus 1. So what's the common denominator? n minus 1, right? So isn't this n minus 1 over n minus 1, like that? Because it's just 1, right? n minus 1 over n minus 1. So I need to have a common denominator to, to combine them, right? So then what do I get when I add n minus 1 plus 1? N. That's just n of those integrals, right? So this is just so this is just uh, n times well n over n minus one, right? Times the integral of sine to the n x dx. That's equal to all of this stuff negative cosine x sine to the n minus 1 x over n minus 1. And then this one is, we left that one alone, goodbye, plus the integral of sine to the n minus 2. Oh, snap. And the last step, what's the last step? Every, multiply both sides by the reciprocal of n over n minus 1 to get rid of it. And that's it. We're done. We are done both sides by the reciprocal, which is n minus 1 over n, everything by, well, let's do it this way, n minus 1 over n, n minus 1 over n. So, oh, I did have enough board space. Okay, so let's write it out. One final push. The integral, so these go away, right? The integral of sine to the nx dx is equal to, what happens to the n minus 1's here? Adios amigos, right? Minus cosine x sine to the n minus 1 x over n plus n minus 1 over n, <coughs> the integral of sine to the n minus 2 x dx. And that, and that is how you derive the reduction formula.